Hey guys, welcome back to Matt Keeps Fish. Today we're going to update you on the 20 gallon, the 29 gallon, this guy, <laughs> and a bunch of other things, so keep watching. So I guess first we'll talk about the tiny elephant in the room. This is Junior. He is my tiger morph crested gecko. At least I think he's a tiger morph. You guys can challenge me on that if you want. And he is the most interactive animal I've ever had. Now you guys know that I work at a pet store and we have lots of crested geckos there. And this guy, for some reason, all of our crested geckos were really hard to sell for the last year. Nobody was interested in them. And it might just be that they're a lower price pretty much everywhere else, but nobody's buying them. And so I was taking care of this guy for a year and since nobody had bought him in a year, our protocol is either send him to another store where he sells better or we make him adoptable and because nobody else had known that he was adoptable yet and I paid the most attention to him I picked him up and he's been awesome ever since the biggest reason that I chose him over the other crested geckos is because he is so incredibly tame uh, a lot of the other crested geckos there didn't get a lot of uh, interaction and so they'd just be jumping all over the place and they wouldn't be very Good job. And they wouldn't be very handleable. Uh, but this guy, I literally would have on my shoulder while I was doing other work. He would eat out of my hands. I have a Snapchat video of him on my shoulder and I put crickets up there and he just like ate two of them at a time, I think. And it was the cutest thing ever. Um, he's super fun to feed live crickets too. I've never seen a crested gecko go after them like he does. He's so cute. I really love this guy. He's just added so much to my journey of keeping animals. He's just so unique. He's so handleable. He's just got so much personality that you don't get in fish. I would say that he's not as smart as some of the fish that I have. He's a little spacey, but he's so unique and I love him. Now he was a little bit of an impulse buy. I was not keeping him properly <laughs> in the beginning. Thankfully these guys are hardy and I was he was able to survive some of my earlier mistakes. But despite working at a pet store for four years and caring for these guys the whole time, I didn't really know a lot about taking care of them personally. At the store everything is free, but when you take care of it yourself, uh, the charges kind of stack up and they hurt a little bit. I also had a little bit of employee arrogance, thinking that I knew everything I needed to know and I'd bring him home and then I'd figure everything out and it'd be fine, but I didn't. I really should have listened to my own advice that I'd been telling other customers the entire time. Now I'll stop talking about the gecko on a fish channel after this, but the biggest issue I had with my gecko was heating. For those of you that are interested in crested geckos, a lot of the advice that you hear online is that they are super easy to keep because they don't need heat, and that is absolutely not true. These guys need a tropical temperature, similar to how a fish needs a tropical temperature, because they don't really have a basking spot like a bearded dragon that they go to. They have a heat that stays in the entire environment because the air is very humid. So if you keep them at 26 degrees Celsius, which is what I strive for, it's gonna be 26 degrees Celsius over the entire enclosure because of how the water carries the heat. Although this is the first crested gecko I've owned personally, the first crested gecko that I've actually had in the place I'm living was my brother's. I got it for him and I told him everything online says they don't need heat, so don't worry about giving it heat. In the winter I gave it a heat pad, but I thought that was fine. It was too late before we realized that most of the advice online was coming from places where their room temperatures were actually the tropical temperatures that these guys needed. Whereas in Canada, where I live, the room temperatures can become very cold, usually below 20 degrees Celsius, which is not what these guys can handle for long periods of time. This just goes to show that just because some people can keep a tropical animal one way, doesn't mean that you can keep it the same way. Okay, let's talk about the 20 gallon aquarium. It has changed completely. The substrate stayed the same, the, the sand has stayed the same, the inhabitants have more or less stayed the same, but the plant choices and the lighting and the nutrients needs, the nutrient needs have completely changed. I took out all the floating plants, which apparently are now illegal in Canada, thanks government. So I replaced it with a variety of low light plants. One of the things that I loved about Hope's first aquarium is that it was low light and it allowed the moss, the java moss, to just explode in growth and it was healthy all the way down. 
when I put it in a low light setup, it was dead at the bottom and growing fiercely out of stress at the top. In the old rendition of the 20 gallon aquarium, I used floating plants to dim the light so that the moss would have an easier time growing. But what I realized is they were taking away all of the nutrients from the moss, don't you dare jump, and they were still allowing enough light to get through to create algae, so the moss was losing both ways. Now, as you see, there are no floating plants, there are no swords, there are no valves, there's nothing that grows fast. Now what we have are a variety of cryptocorines, Anubias, Marimo moss, uh, Java moss, obviously, Java fern, and I, there might be some more stuff in there. I've just kind of thrown a bunch of low light plants in there. And naturally, they're taking longer to grow, but once they do, I imagine it's gonna be a beautiful forest of plants. Turning the lights down on the aquarium has also helped with a few other things. For instance, the anchor catfish are now more active, more confident during the day. So instead of seeing them move once a week, I now get to see them move once a day. On that note, shout out to the guy who commented on my Ember Tetra care guide video, because he noted that if you put bloodworms on top of the anchor catfish, they will eat them and they will otherwise starve if they're not fed that way. Now, I've had the anchor catfish for quite a few months. I think I got them in August or something. No, it was in fall and it's February now. So I don't think they've starved and I've only been feeding pellets, but I have started doing the bloodworm method like he suggested and I found that they would only move to eat them if it was pitch black. So I put the bloodworms out and I left and I turned the lights off and sure enough, some bloodworms were gone, but I never saw them eat them. So mystery man, thank you for the suggestion and I will probably continue to keep feeding pellets because uh, it's worked so far, but every week I will also do the bloodworm method. Another thing that's changed with the darker aquarium look is the assassin snails have started breeding more readily. Now I've had four assassin snails in there for quite a long time and they are breeding constantly, but they never lay eggs. And if they do lay eggs, they never hatch. And I have no idea why, uh, but now I see that they are laying really big eggs for their size on the Anubias and on the wood and on some pieces of gravel. And I think they're gonna hatch this time. So hopefully in the next update, we'll actually be making money on those as well because we're also making money over in this tank, which we'll get to later. You will also notice that to enhance the darker features of the aquarium, I've added a black background. So now the Ember Tetras are more intense in their color, the Celestial Pearl Danios are more intense in their color, and it's also helping to make the anchor catfish feel more safe. I have lost some Ember Tetras though, so I've also purchased some more. There's going to be, I think 14 total in the aquarium. So 14 Ember Tetras, three anchor catfish, one honey gourami who's right now in quarantine, and I lost count. Six celestial pearl danios, I don't know if I said that already. You kind of look like a Chihua gecko. Actually, not a Chihua gecko. It's, are you gonna jump? You can do it for us? What's the gecko he looks like? The one that's really tan? A crested gecko, probably, but there's another one out there. I think it's a crossbreed. <laughs> Clint's Reptiles did a video on it. I'll uh, put a picture of it somewhere. So yes, I have gotten more Ember Tetras. As we remember, I accidentally killed a bunch of them because the flow was too high in quarantine. So I've got six new ones in there. Uh, one died relatively recently, actually, that was in the main tank because it looked like he had like asthma. He was breathing really hard, and I think that was because of the high flow in quarantine as well. There's actually quite a few fish, oh my gosh, that I put in the quarantine tank from the 20 gallon tank because I am on my last round of medications for uh, treating for internal parasites and camelanus worms and stuff, which I made a video on. It'll be linked there. And I just wanted to make sure that I had treated as many fish as possible that were most likely to have parasites before I ran out because you're not always guaranteed to get medication shipped to Canada because it's also illegal. Canada's not fun, guys. Okay, next tank. Um, the vase, I sold it. It's gone. I've kept a lot of plants from it. We're gonna see pearl weed in the 29 gallon. It's going bonkers. It's such a beautiful plant. I love it. But I sold the vase. I gave it to, well, I sold it to my friend Shuby. We made a video. I'll also link it right now about his beautiful scapes. They are really beautiful. I would recommend checking them out. And he's made it into something brand new and it looks great. So now the 29 gallon, the big boy, um, it's big. I love it. 
I've got so many more fish in there. I mean, the last time you guys saw it, it was kind of like a teaser. I had just shown you that there was a shrimp that somehow snuck in. I was kind of growing plants. The driftwood is still like a little uh, covered in mold, I guess fungus, and it just looked kind of bad. But over the months, I've really done a lot of work planting it, bringing over a lot of highlight plants from the 20 gallon and putting them in there. It's kind of been my low light highlight style uh, of contrast. And a lot of the plants in the 29 gallon, I am actually uh, selling and making money off of, which is awesome. Currently, as far as I know, it has a hygrophilia. I think it's hygrophilia. It looks beautiful. I have no idea where it came from, but it's doing great. Uh, the majority is going to be water sprite. Looks like a carrot top, doing amazing. Gonna be a lot of sales on that. Water lettuce moved over from there, doing amazing. Uh, Salvinia, illegal, keeping a little bit, because why not? Couple types of swords, some dwarf hair grass, just lots of stuff in there. And I love the look of it. And all the plants are loving the highlight, because they're highlight plants. It hasn't been all up and to the right with this tank though. I have had a lot of issues as well. The first issue being rainbow fish. I bought a lot of rainbow fish from the same store. And I guess they were getting beat up because they looked like they had bruises, but apparently there's something with rainbow fish called black spot disease. And I thought I could bring them back from it, but it pretty much killed all the ones that had it. I was also worried that maybe some of the rainbow fish had worms, so I made sure to treat them for worms. I treat everything for worms, but I gave them a second dose. You'll notice that I'm kind of trying to make this 29 gallon aquarium my new old 40 gallon aquarium, if you guys are old enough to remember that. It had lots of rainbow fish, it had some peaceful cichlids, it was awesome, and then worms happen, internal parasites happen, and it had to all be shut down. But this hopefully is going to be the newer, smaller version of that. Now, last video I told you guys about a lot of the fish stocking ideas that I had, and a lot of the stuff I tried to order in and it just never came in. Pencil fish being one of them, just never came in. Lamp eye killifish, I dropped those guys. But we did get dwarf neon gobies in here, and they look awesome. Now you'll notice I only did two. I was thinking about doing like 10, which would have been over $100 where I live, but I ended up just sticking with two because like the anchor catfish, I'm not sure if they're eating their fill. And with these guys, they love to eat the algae, they love to eat the natural growth. So I wanted to make sure that I wasn't starving them by having too many in there because they're all gonna be eating the same thing. And if there's not enough to go around, somebody's gonna starve. Following my stocking of rainbow fish and gobies, rainbow fish being the big school of fish that's friendly and loves to come up to me. Like, I don't get that from the 20 gallon, the 29 gallon, I get all that from. I got all that energy, I got all that personality from these rainbow fish. They have so much color, which is why I'm trimming back the plants so I can get even more of that color. And honestly, they're just the best thing about the 29 gallon. Like, e even if they were the only thing in there, although I like variety, it would still be an awesome tank. But I did want some variation in what kind of species I had in there. So I tried a bunch of different centerpieces. I tried some ideas for bottom sand sifters and not all of them worked out. So Corydoras, I was gonna do, I pushed them back to another future uh, aquarium setup that I will do eventually. I just don't wanna reuse any fish, you know? Like if I keep all these tanks till the end, and have them just continue to grow out. I don't wanna have like ember tetras, ember tetras, ember tetras, you know? Like I want one tank to have ember tetras and then we move on to something else. So no Corydoras this time, but I still wanted a sand sifter. So instead we did Bolivian Rams and I had to order them in and it was a huge pain and I had to sell off excess males cause they were being jerks. But now I'm pretty confident that we have one pair of Bolivian Rams and they get along super well and their color's amazing, and they're peaceful with all the other fish, and they sand sift, and I love them. I did, however, have another sand sifter. Woo, that was a good one. I did have another sand sifter in this aquarium, uh, or centerpiece, sorry, not a sand sifter, and that was a paradise fish. And let me tell you, paradise fish are a wide range of personalities. My cousin, Josiah, we've had him on the channel before, he has a paradise fish in his 10 gallon aquarium, or 15, and it is super peaceful. Loves living with the, the uh, black neon tetras, loves living with the, are you gonna jump on my face? Loves living with the hillstream loaches, coolie loaches, tons of different catfish and stuff like that. It's super peaceful, which goes contrary to everything else that's on the internet about paradise fish. 
And so my store started getting them. I decided to give them a shot because we refund everything up to two weeks. And I, so I quarantined him for, I think, uh, a week or two. I think I quarantined him for a week. That's one round of medication. And then I put him in just to see if it was worth continuing to medicate him. And I watched him and within the first 15 minutes, he had bitten a chunk out of a rainbow fish. So that was the end of that idea. But he was very beautiful and uh, I will definitely be doing other gourami species in the future. So now we're almost at the end point for all these aquariums evolution. And the end point for this 29 gallon, the final piece is a school of ghost catfish or glass catfish. Personally, I prefer the term glass catfish, but I sell them as ghost catfish. Now I had glass catfish in the previous aquarium. They have a beautiful rainbow iridescence and obviously they're almost completely transparent. I only got a school of three. That was all that I was able to get in, but they should mesh well with the other rainbow fish and feel comfortable. And they've been doing well in quarantine so far, so I can't wait to have another update where they're finally in that 29 gallon aquarium. I've loved building this aquarium. It's literally been a highlight in my living room slash kitchen slash dining room. It's at the end of the dining room table, which is such a cool look. And all the fish in it are so playful. I love them. I love that I finally got around to using stratum. This is my literal, literally this is my first stratum tank. I've done aquariums for so long. And this is the first one, well, four years. And this is the first stratum tank I've done. So it really turned out beautifully. I can't wait to see how it looks with the ghost catfish, glass catfish in it. And I hope that you guys are excited too, because it'll be coming up in probably the next month. So that's the end of all the updates for the aquariums. However, you guys who want to stick around, get some bonus life updates. I am going to do my master's in counseling, hopefully. I haven't got accepted yet, but we're on track for it. So I've been doing lots of studying to kind of prepare myself, although it's not gonna prepare me for the amount of stress, I'm sure, which is why the videos are probably gonna slow down uh, for that reason and because I don't have anywhere else to put aquariums. Now, some of you will disagree with that. And for those of you who do, you can have a nice little talk with my wife. But honestly, even if it wasn't for her request that this be the maximum for animals in the house, I probably should stop at this point anyways. There's a lot of work coming my way and I need to be putting a lot of my focus onto counseling in order to do it well. I feel like that's a very ethical call to make. However, I will still try to do care guides on my animals. Uh, I have lots to learn about this guy before I ever do a care guide on him. But as for the other fish that I've been keeping and plants and other basic tips, I will love doing videos on those as well as shorts as things grow and develop. But the next update after next month's will not be for a while. So if you guys want to see that final aquarium update, I suggest that you subscribe so you don't miss it. If you like this video, make sure that you leave it a like, and I will see you guys on a Sunday. Say goodbye.